the area I will be planning in looked like before I started this project. These two bushes you see here have been growing in this area for over 20 years. As you can see, the roots are quite extensive. Here's one of the root balls. And here's the other. This is what it looked like after digging out this section. You'll notice that the ground is a bit muddy. I should note that most of the areas in my backyard are extremely poor draining. In order to test this area, I added some water to see how long it would take for the water to drain. Fortunately for this section, I only had to go down about two and a half feet. I've had other areas in my backyard where I've had to go much deeper to get to well-draining soil. These are some of the trees I will be planting in this area. That is an ice cream bean tree on the left, pitomba in the center, and a grumichama on the right. This vine you see here on the fence is a honeysuckle that will be transplanted in this area. The hole you see here in the center will be used for a deep root watering system I will be using in this area. The hole is about three feet deep. I'll be adding two more holes for deep root watering. They will be about five feet apart from one another. The uh, second pipe will be here in this area. The third will be on the other side. Over in this area. I'll have to dig this hole down to a depth of about five feet. This is the pipe I'll be using for the deep root watering system. It is a three inch diameter perforated pipe. Once placed in the hole, I added some lava rock. Before adding the fill dirt, I spread some gypsum on the bottom in order to loosen the soil. I then installed the deep root watering pipes for each section and began to backfill this area. 
Each planting section will have at least one deep root watering pipe. The native soil in this area has been amended with uh, sand, organic soil mix, cactus soil mix, and a little chicken manure. This section out here also has its own deep root watering pipe. I won't be using the deep root watering system until the trees here are well established. For now, I'll be installing a drip uh, irrigation system. Once the trees are more established, which I'm guessing will take a couple of, at least a couple of years, I'll be switching over to the deep root watering system. If you are wondering what these metal stakes are for, it's a rebar that is being used to keep these blocks in place. It's a half inch diameter by three feet in length piece of rebar that will be pounded into the ground in each of these blocks. That will keep the blocks and wood from sliding out of place. I'll be cutting the deep root watering pipe down to ground level once I'm done. The first to be planted were the uh, persimmon trees. I already had a gyro fuyu and I recently ordered a chocolate and a coffee cake persimmon. Both of these trees arrived as bare root trees. The uh, gyro fuyu was purchased back in June of 2019 from a local nursery. I kept this tree in a 15 gallon pot it came in and decided to wait until it went dormant before putting it in the ground. This is the area where I'll be planting the persimmon trees. As you can see, there's a deep root watering system on each side. I planted the uh, ivy vine in the back, which will be trained to grow along the fence. I'm hoping this vine will attract plenty of pollinators in this area. The trees will be planted in a rectangular shape, spaced about two feet apart. Since the soil on this planting area was already prepped, all I had to do was dig a small hole for each tree. I mixed a little sand into each hole and sprinkled some mycorrhiza on the bottom. The first to go in positioned towards the front was the chocolate persimmon. Before planting, I sprinkled some mycorrhiza on the roots. The next to go in was the coffee cake persimmon. I positioned the coffee cake persimmon towards the back on the right side. The last persimmon to go in was the gyro fuyu. As you can see here, most of the soil was removed. When I removed this tree from the 15 gallon container, I noticed a foul odor. Persimmon trees are highly susceptible to root rot. The soil that this tree was planted in from the nursery contained some wood chips and did not appear to be well draining or good quality soil. I decided to remove most of the soil down to the root ball. The exposed roots appear to be healthy. Before putting the tree in the ground, I sprinkled some mycorrhiza on the roots. I also sprinkled some mycorrhiza in the planting hole and mix in some sand to help with drainage. Once in the ground, I built a small mound of dirt around the trunk of each tree. This soil should be uh, fairly well draining. The mound of dirt is just a, an extra step I took to protect the tree from root rot as much as possible. 
I also dug a small trench around each tree for watering. The next to go in were the mangoes. They will also be planted in a triangular shape at about two feet apart. I prepped the holes in pretty much the uh, same manner as the persimmons. The three varieties planted here are a coconut cream mango in the front. The back right is a carry mango and a glen mango on the left. The last section was prepped in the same manner as the others. In this section, I will be planting three trees, uh, a gumichama, pitamba, and an ice cream bean tree. The Grumi Trauma was growing in a 15 gallon container, the Patamba in a 3 gallon nursery container, and the ice cream bean in a 10 gallon grow bag. The first to go in uh, was the ice cream bean tree. It was positioned in the back left. The next to go in was the uh, Grumi Chama. It was positioned in the rear right side of, the, of this section. This tree was just starting to get root bound. It was definitely ready to be put in the ground. Before planting, I uh, loosened up the roots along the sides of the and also the bottom. As with all the others, I also sprinkled some mycorrhiza on the roots. And lastly, I planted the pitamba. It will be planted in the front. As you can see, this tree was also getting root bone. I loosened the roots and sprinkled some mycorrhiza on them before putting it in the ground. Once the trees were planted, I built a mound around for each tree uh, for watering. From the research I've done on high density three and one hole planting techniques, it's best to plant trees that are of the same family. Both the Grumichama and Patamba are from the Eugenia family. I don't believe there will be any issues putting these two next to one another. My concern is with the ice cream bean tree. This tree is botanically classified as Inga edulis. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. This tree is one of those uh, nitrogen fixer, which basically means their roots contain nitrogen fixing bacteria uh, in order to help them improve the nitrogen in the soil. I'm hoping that even though it's not in the same family as the other trees, it will do well in this area. I'll be posting videos on a regular basis and keep you all updated on how it's doing. I'm not concerned about the other trees in this area. All of these that are planted in each section are of the same, same family, so it shouldn't pose a problem. After planting all the trees, I spread some worm castings on top. Next, I place some newspaper on top of that. I 
I then added a layer of uh, cardboard. I finished this area by adding wood chips. I also added some pumice around the trunks of the trees. I ran out of wood chips for these trees. I'll be adding some more at a later date. I'm hoping these will all do well. As I said before, I'll be posting update videos on these trees and let you know how they are doing. The mangoes are all starting to put out uh, new growth. The Glen Mango here uh, is around three and a half years old. If it does develop flowers, I may only leave a few. I don't want to leave too many flowers on it. I'd rather have the tree focus on growth rather than fruit production for its first year in the ground. The same holds true for the uh, coconut cream mango. It too is about three and a half years old. The youngest of the bunch is the uh, carry mango. If this one does develop flowers, I won't be uh, letting it set any fruit. I'd rather it focus its energy on root development and growth. Next year, if they're doing well, I will more than likely let them set fruit. Well, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click on the links to see other videos I've posted. I'll be uploading videos on a regular basis and keep you updated on my backyard orchard. Hit the subscribe button below and don't forget to click on the bell so you can get alerts as soon as I upload videos. Thank you for watching.